Salutations and good morrow everyone and welcome back to another Grounded Update video where today we're going to be talking about 5 do's and 5 don'ts that are inside of Grounded that you should do when you guys first get in and start playing around with this update. Now I've come up with these after playing this update way too much and I think that they are the most helpful tips for you. Some of them are going to seem kind of obvious and some of them are going to be like, oh, I didn't know that. So the first thing I'm going to tell you guys you're going to want to do is you're going to want to build yourself a diving knife or as I like to call it the pebblet dagger they're really easy to make in the game you just need a pebblet two crude rope and some lily pad wax now crude rope super easy to get guys we've been making it forever you may know it as woven fiber but it's not woven uh, rope pebblets you find them everywhere but lily pad wax all you have to do is hop underneath one of these lily pads over here and grab it right off of the bottom of the lily pad now there's normally one or two right on each one of the lily pads so just grab two of them and make yourself up a um, diving knife now the reason why you want to do this is one it's a versatile weapon that can be used underwater two is because you're gonna need it in order to harvest eel grass and eel grass is going to be a number one thing you're going to be needing with this update because there is a lot of things inside of this update that require eelgrass in their recipes. So get yourself a pebblet dagger, get yourself some eelgrass. Eelgrass is not a tip, but I'm just saying you're going to need a lot of it. So the pebblet daggers are going to help and also it's going to help you underwater as well, being able to fight off other things. Number two is you're going to want to make some flippers, okay? Number, you're really, you're really, really, really going to want to make flippers um, because you swim super slow without them. With the flippers, you could swim really ridiculously fast, but without them attacking anything underwater is going to be super difficult. I mean, look how fast the water boatman swims. He's just going to get away from you every time you try to fight him. Now, it is a little bit of a catch-22 because when you are making flippers, you're going to need to kill water boatmen in order to get to make them. Let's go over and I'll show you guys this under workbench gear here. Fin flops is really what they're called. Four water boatmen flin fins, uh, two eel grass strands, and two lily pad wax. So like I said with those eel grass strands, why I said the diving knife is so important or the pebblet dagger as they call it now is so important is because you need it to get these flippers. Okay. These flippers will save your life. Trust me. You can't go explore the underwater base without them. You cannot go swim around and fight any spiders. I would avoid fighting anything in the pond except for maybe the tab poles and the water boatman until you have um, your flippers because the spiders will generally just kill you. You're also going to have leeches to contend with soon and um, pond striders to contend with that are going to want to fight with you as well. So you're going to want these flippers to make sure you can either get to them or get away from them, making you a more versatile fighter in the game by being able to move around more. Like I've said from the beginning, guys, when fighting, blocking and moving around are two huge things you need to do in this game and if you don't do them you're going to die you're going to have a problem so make sure you guys have the availability to move around but what i will say as an added caveat for you guys is that the koi scale greaves a lot of you guys don't know this but it does say that it gives you um a sturdy hydrodynamic leg plates made from koi fish scales offers increased protection without sacrificing style. They have changed these, okay? They used to have the fins on them to make it so you swim faster. They knew not, they, they no longer do. So, sadly, they removed it. It's a bummer, um, and they don't have that skill anymore. But, hey, what are you going to do, right? Okay, moving on to tip number three for you guys, and that is the gill tube. This gill tube is not difficult to make, and you're going to need one. Okay, without it, you don't get that much oxygen. Okay, you get the junior diver perk right there, um, and it gives you an additional 30 oxygen, I believe, and it allows it so you can go and fight more and explore a little bit more. But this is just a predecessor to the actual bubble helmet. Now, you're going to need the gill tube in order to make the bubble helmet because you're going to need sunken bones. And in order to get down there, you're going to want to have the gill tube. That way, you can go around and explore and get those sunken bones. Okay. And then the next one, tip number four, comes from those sunken bones. After you have up all the sunken bones that you can get, then you're going to want to come out and you're going to want to make one of the best weapons added to the game, and that is the Bone Trident. 
Okay, there's three sunken bones, two diving bell spider chunks, and three eelgrass strands. Now, if you go back through all my other do's, um, before this one is you're going to need your diving knife, you're going to need a rebreather, and you're going to need flippers. Okay, those are three things you're gonna need specifically to take out the diving bell spiders so you can take out and get their legs so you can make yourself a trident. So you're gonna want this trident because this trident allows you to do all sorts of cheeses in the game. It makes fighting things way easier. You can one shot most enemies in the game with this thing, um, especially if you have coup de grace and um, a couple other perks, including the spear perk, which really does help. It ups up to 60% more damage with this bone trident every time you swing. So really having this bone trident is super, super, super helpful. And I would suggest everybody gets it. The last thing is kind of one that you guys are probably Probably wondering well why is this on the dues is because I believe it is completely necessary when playing this update and exploring in the water and gathering everything that you need is building yourself a small pond base like I did over here now yours doesn't even need to be this big you can literally have it a, a one by two or a two by two I happen to make mine um, a three by two I believe is what mine is with a little porch here um, and you don't have to go this extent with it but I would suggest building yourself a little base now why this is number five and not number one because like I said exploring you're gonna need it because you actually have to get into the pond base and get the uh, fishbowl burgle chip in order to unlock these bases okay so I would suggest highly that you guys go out and you guys get yourself um, the floating foundations from the burgle chip and then build yourself a little pond base because there are other things that's gonna get added to the pond they're constantly adding more things in there for you to find they've already added two new scabbies um, that you can find which are really neat you guys can check those out in an additional video that I made on the channel if you guys want to know what those look like and where they are and other secrets that are in the pond but that's pretty much all the do's in the game let's talk about the don'ts for this update Number one, the biggest one that I'm going to tell you guys right now, do not, I repeat, do not try to fight the koi fish. There is zero reason right now, zero reason to fight the koi fish. It does not make him drop scales. It does not make him drop bones. You cannot kill it. All it does is one shot you. The koi fish is an enemy that the only thing you want to do is avoid. Okay. He will kill you immediately upon seeing you. And he has quite the lunge attack with him as well that can one shot you. So do not fight the koi fish it is not worth your time it is not worth losing your gear and having to go back or load your save game anyway um just just whatever you do just don't do it okay it's just an all-around bad idea okay let's talk about tip number two i told you guys with the dues that you guys are going to want to make sure that you guys are attacking the diving bell spiders after you get up all your gear but what i will say is do not take on more than two of them at a time they have a poison move that is just like the wolf spider's poison okay and they hit pretty hard they can do some sizable damage to you so do not take on more than two at a time because even if you perfect block both of them the poison will still wipe you out slowly if you happen to miss a perfect block the damage that they can do everything like that it seems um you know kind of fundamental that you wouldn't go on and take on more than uh two enemies at a time but really guys do not take on more than two diving bell spiders at a time it is just too dangerous and 95 percent of the time you are going to die some of you are going to be grounded gurus and be like well sim i could take out the diving bell spiders without a problem i could take out two five six of them that's great and i'm happy for you i'm in that same boat with you um but for most people who are playing this game they just um aren't going to have the the experience and the skill in the beginning to take on more than two that's why i'm saying when you first get in you first start playing this don't try to fight more than two at a time wait for yourself to get some experience and then once you have that experience go out and take on 30 of them at a time i would love to see what you guys can do against 100 diving bell spiders at a time but you'd probably die because i tried it and i died and it wasn't very entertaining that's why it didn't become a video okay the third thing guys this one's going to seem kind of fundamental as well um do not run out of oxygen underwater you no longer have a timer or your health to go click 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 dead okay it now just goes fade to black and you die immediately as soon as you run out of oxygen you die so do not run out of oxygen i know it sounds stupid but don't do it because you will die immediately and then you have to go get all your stuff back again and if you die in the in the underwater cave you have to run all the way back over to spawn over there 585 centimeters away from the pond in order to get your bag so 
It sucks. Don't do it. Just don't die. Don't run out of oxygen. It's not a fun time in this update. All right, guys. So the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is smoothies in this update. Okay, so they have added two new smoothie recipes to the game. They have, add, well, they've edited liquid gills and added fluid flippers. I'm going to tell you now, right now, don't make them. Why, Sim? Well, because right now they're kind of a waste, okay? There's no reason for you to actually make these right now unless you're just looking for a little boost. So wasting the items that it would take for you to make these is kind of... It's kind of a waste of time right now. I mean, yeah, you can get raw tadpole meat and um, these flippers. I mean, you have to literally get these flippers in order to build everything. And then you have to use them also to make the fluid flippers recipe. Not worth it. Okay, guys, I'm telling you right now, not worth it. Yes, you can get water fleas without a problem in order to use with these mixed tadpoles and some eelgrass. But I'm telling you guys, it's not worth it it's not worth your time to go out and make these smoothie recipes right now um they don't have anything in the game maybe in end game they're gonna add something where it's like wow you really need to start making these smoothies or if you guys are playing on whoa it might be cool to make these smoothies as well but right now there's not really a need for it and the last thing guys on the don'ts list for you guys not to do in this update is do not i repeat do not make a base in that pagoda that i'm looking at right now there's a reason why. When I was originally playing this game and I was able to get into the developer's code of this game, that thing was full of orb weavers. It is a spawn location for orb weavers later in the game. There's even spider webs up in the top of the pagoda. It is not worth you building a base over there. All you're gonna do is run into diving bell spiders all around your base and also orb weavers inside of your base all the time it is not worth building a base over there i know you guys could probably build some wicked cool things over there but i'm going to tell you in the beginning until the game releases out with the full um, release content of it do not build a base over there because we do not know what is going to be put over there it could be a new version of spiders it could be a boss spider i'm not sure but what i will say is that there was spiders in there before and building over there could mean uh death for you or destruction of your base but that's all the tips i have for you guys today so thank you guys all so much for watching until this point you guys hit that like button for me to make sure i know you guys are enjoying grounded videos and i'll keep on making them leave me a comment down below if something cool that you think or the most helpful tip that i've given you guys today hit that subscribe button and turn that bell notification to all to let me know you guys love seeing videos and you guys never miss any of them and as always i will see all of you guys in the next one